this is going to be a, a joint walk with uh, my colleague uh, David Gosset, who is uh, an organizer of this conference, and uh, Robert Koenig from University of Munich. And uh, so let me be begin with some uh, uh, motivation for why we are interested in uh, shallow circuits. And uh, uh, suppose we want to build uh, a quantum computer using noisy qubits and uh, noisy gates. And then, uh, basically, we have two uh, options. Uh, option one is to uh, encode each qubit using uh, some quantum error correcting codes, say the surface code, and uh, perform logical gates on uh, encoded qubits. Then uh, they know that, uh, in principle, we can perform uh, arbitrarily long computation as long as our error rate is below some constant uh, uh, threshold value, around 1%. And uh, option two is to uh, uh, apply gates directly to physical qubits without error correction. Uh, and this completely avoids the uh, uh, quantum fault tolerance overhead uh, that can be quite large. Uh, uh, but now there will be a, a certain limit on the maximum size of a computation uh, they can do. And uh, the first approximation we can use this uh, rough estimate and uh, basically, it says that the average number of uh, faulty locations in our circuit uh, is upper bounded by uh, uh, inverse error rate. Uh, and uh, so the total number of locations that can potentially be faulty is just uh, the number of qubits n uh, times uh, the number of uh, computational step d, or circuit depth. Uh, and uh, uh, so n times d is upper bounded by uh, inverse error rate. And this is a constant, but hopefully this constant can be quite large, perhaps 1,000 or even 10,000. Uh, and uh, somehow uh, this bound leads to interesting uh, trade-offs. Uh, so we can try to do uh, very long computations described by deep circuits, but then we can only afford uh, a few qubits. And of course, uh, any quantum circuit acting on a few qubits can be efficiently simulated uh, on a classical computer. So in some sense, this uh, is a, a boring regime. Mm. Uh, alternatively, uh, we can consider uh, shallow circuits with a small depth. Uh, and now we can afford uh, much more qubits, perhaps uh, 100 or something of this order. And uh, it is strongly believed that uh, such circuits are impossible to simulate uh, classically. So the question is whether we can uh, uh, realize any uh, useful computation uh, using uh, shallow quantum circuits. <clears throat> uh, and uh, so the study of shallow circuits was pioneered by uh, Barbara Terhel and David DeVincenzo uh, back in 2002 when uh, they were here at IBM. Uh, and uh, they gave uh, a convincing arguments showing that uh, even constant depth circuits with depth uh, three or larger uh, are hard to simulate uh, classically. Uh, and, uh, uh, and quite recently, people developed some ideas of what, uh, what can we do with shallow circuits. Uh, so we, we have heard from Eddie talk about uh, approximate optimization algorithm. And if we apply this algorithm to problems such as uh, max cut on bounded degree graphs, it can be realized by uh, uh, constant depth circuits. Then we can uh, try to do uh, um, variational uh, quantum eigensolver. And this may have applications in uh, uh, quantum chemistry simulations. Um, and uh, quite recently, there was a lot of work on uh, uh, complexity of sampling problems that we can realize uh, with constant depth circuits. Uh, and there are indications that uh, uh, somehow uh, such sampling problems are hard for classical computers. So we can achieve this uh, quantum supremacy. Now, if we increase the depth from constant to uh, something logarithmic in the number of qubits, uh, we can do uh, much more interesting things. Uh, for example, uh, well, if we allow uh, ancillary qubits, we can realize a uh, short uh, factoring algorithm. Uh, and uh, we can uh, implement any uh, circuit composed of uh, Clifford group gates. Uh, then uh, 
uh, there are interesting uh, variational states called uh, MERA uh, that, uh, uh, that can, be, can be prepared with logarithmic depth circuits. And uh, this MERA state uh, is uh, a good uh, approximation to ground states of gapless spin systems. Uh, and perhaps we can even uh, uh, study, we can learn something about uh, quantum gravity. In particular, it's known that random logarithmic depth circuits uh, exhibit a property called uh, information scrambling, and uh, this reminiscence of uh, uh, dynamics describing uh, black holes. And of course, if we allow a uh, depth polynomial in the number of qubits, we basically have universal quantum computer. So we can realize anything in uh, BQP. <clears throat> uh, and in this talk, I will uh, restrict myself to constant depth circuits. And uh, so let me start from um, some terminology. Uh, so a circuit of depth D consists of uh, D time steps, such that uh, each time step uh, is a product of disjoint gates. So this is an example of depth five circuit composed of uh, uh, two qubit gates. And uh, so this circuit has uh, some classical input and a classical output. <coughs> And say uh, uh, input is just k-bit string, and we initialize uh, the first k qubits in uh, 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 0 or 1 according to this input string. And there could be some ancillary qubits that we can we initialize in 0. <coughs> and uh, at the end of the day, we measure some subset of qubits uh, in a 0, 1 basis, and this defines uh, uh, output string of the circuit. <coughs> Uh, and so the main object we are interested in is this uh, output probability distribution. It tells us what is the uh, probability of observing some output z, provided that the input is uh, x. <coughs> and uh, so what I mean by uh, constant f circuits is actually an infinite family of uh, such circuits uh, parameterized by number of qubits n. And uh, the depth of the circuits is bounded by some constant uh, independent of n. And I'm going to consider uh, a fixed uh, gate sets also independent of n. <coughs> uh, now, uh, I guess uh, 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 the most important question is uh, whether constant depth quantum circuits can uh, outperform classical computers, that is, solve uh, some problem which is hard for polynomial size classical circuits. <clears throat> uh, as I said, we uh, believe that probably the answer is yes, but uh, uh, we cannot hope to get unconditional proof because if we can prove uh, that the answer is yes, we can separate a complexity class BQP from the class BPP, which would imply uh, well, uh, some major breakthroughs in uh, classical complexity theory. <clears throat> For example, we would separate P space from uh, P. And uh, uh, somehow uh, here we uh, ask uh, perhaps a simpler question. Uh, uh, we ask whether constant depth quantum circuits can solve some uh, computational uh, problem which is hard for uh, constant depth classical circuits. So we are comparing uh, uh, quantum circuits and classical circuits, but in both cases we restrict to uh, constant depth. So, uh, and this is much, we will see what this is much simpler question. <coughs> uh, but uh, it turns out that the answer depends on uh, what exactly do we mean by uh, a computational problem. <coughs> uh, and usually uh, in complexity theory, people study uh, decision problems so what it means is that uh, input of the problem is uh, some bit string x, and output is uh, just a single bit z, uh, which tells whether x has or doesn't have some property. But it's not hard to see that uh, uh, <clears throat> if a constant depth quantum circuit can solve a decision problem, it can also be solved by uh, a constant, well, by a very simple classical circuit. Uh, and basically, uh, <clears throat> we can use ca causality to show that uh, uh, somehow this output bit z can only depend on a constant number of input bits. 
Say, suppose we have some constant F circuit U that solves uh, a decision problem. Uh, uh, and then uh, the, uh, <coughs> we can compute probability distribution of Z by measuring uh, expectation value of some a single qubit observable or, say, acting on the first qubit on the final state produced by the circuit. Uh, and uh, so this expectation value is uh, given by this uh, equation. Uh, and uh, so you can see that this operator, uh, well, if u is a constant depth circuit, this operator acts only on a constant number of qubits. Uh, so this is some quantum circuit which has only constant size. Uh, and of course, we can simulate it by a classical circuit of constant size. So uh, somehow, uh, uh, for decision problems, the answer to this question is uh, no. Uh, and uh, so next, let's consider uh, search problems. So here, the input is still a bit stink, uh, but uh, the output is not a single bit, but uh, it could be a set of uh, some n-bit stinks. <coughs> uh, so for each input, there are uh, many possible uh, outputs, and each output is uh, a bit stink. Uh, and uh, one example of such search problem would be a combinatorial optimization, like solving a three-set problem. So uh, here, input x describes uh, some system of equations with uh, binary variables uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, a set of solutions z is uh, just a set of bit strings that uh, satisfy all equations. <clears throat> so these search problems uh, appear naturally uh, in many areas. <clears throat> uh, and we can say that uh, a quantum circuit uh, solves a search problem uh, if uh, for any input x, uh, it outputs uh, uh, a valid solution, uh, uh, perhaps with some small error probability epsilon. Uh, so we want to have uh, this condition for uh, any input x. But remember that uh, this thing is the output probability distribution of the circuit. <coughs> uh, and uh, so this is uh, a summary of uh, our results. Uh, so uh, I will show you uh, uh, one example uh, of uh, a search problem uh, that can be solved with certainty by uh, a constant depth uh, quantum circuit. And uh, moreover, this uh, quantum circuit only requires uh, nearest neighbor gates on a two-dimensional grid of qubits. <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, we prove that uh, uh, somehow if uh, some classical circuit uh, solves this problem with not non-negligible error probability, such circuit must have logarithmic depth. <clears throat> so uh, in the quantum case, the depth is constant, and in the classical case, it's at least logarithmic. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, 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 in the classical case, uh, uh, somehow we allow arbitrary gates, so we don't have to be uh, nearest neighbor or geometrically local in any sense. But uh, uh, as usual, uh, there is some fine print. Uh, you can probably not read this, but what it says is that uh, this problem can be solved uh, classically in polynomial time. So uh, somehow we don't achieve uh, a quantum speed up similar to a Shor's algorithm, uh, but uh, 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 this is a quantum advantage if we restrict both quantum and classical uh, to, to a constant depth. <clears throat> anyway, uh, and this is uh, the plan of the, for the rest of my talk. Uh, so first of all, I will uh, formally define uh, this problem uh, we call it hidden linear function problem. Uh, then uh, I will show you uh, a constant depth uh, quantum algorithm that solves this problem. Uh, and in the rest of the talk, uh, I will uh, uh, sketch the proof uh, that basically gives you lower bound on the depth of uh, a classical uh, circuit that solves this problem. <clears throat> okay, uh, so let me define uh, what is a hidden linear function problem. Uh, so suppose we are given some uh, binary matrix A, uh, and it has to be uh, symmetric. Uh, then uh, uh, we can define several things. We can define a uh, null space of this matrix, uh, and this is a set of uh, n-bit strings that are uh, 
uh, annihilated by this matrix modular two. So just the usual null space, but it's defined modular two. Uh, and uh, we can define a quadratic form. Uh, 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 so uh, here we take uh, the argument of this form is n bit string. Uh, so these variables are binary. Uh, and uh, so here I use matrix vector uh, notations. So x is column vector, and this is x transpose is a row vector. And uh, for technical reasons, I uh, evaluate this form uh, modulo 4. <coughs> Uh, now let me just illustrate this uh, by example. Suppose we have uh, three variables and we have this symmetric binary matrix. Uh, then uh, what is the null space of A? Well, we have to solve this uh, system of equations. And uh, well, it's not hard to check that the null space consists of O0 vector and uh, O1 vector. Uh, and the quadratic form associated with A uh, uh, would be given by this equation. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this x1 and x3 comes from diagonal matrix elements. And because uh, uh, x are binary variables, uh, say x1 is the same as x1 squared. And uh, <coughs> the purpose of this uh, example is to uh, uh, illustrate uh, one distinction between uh, real valued quadratic forms and uh, binary ones. So uh, if, uh, say, if x is a, a real vector, which is annihilated by A, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, this quadratic form uh, evaluates to 0. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, this is not the case uh, in the binary. Uh, for binary quadratic form, say, if you look at this example, and we pick x as uh, O1's vector, then uh, this quadratic form evaluates to something uh, uh, non-zero. Uh, uh, and more generally, one can easily show uh, the following uh, property. Uh, if, uh, if we take this uh, binary quadratic form and uh, restrict it to a uh, null space uh, of A, uh, then we get some uh, uh, Boolean linear function. Uh, so uh, more precisely, uh, uh, we can represent q of x as 2 uh, times some uh, Boolean linear function L of x. Uh, and this is true for all x uh, in the null space of A. Uh, and uh, any uh, Boolean linear function can be parameterized by, uh, uh, by this uh, uh, secret bit string uh, z. Uh, so the linear function is just uh, inner product between uh, z uh, and x uh, up to this factor of 2. Uh, uh, and uh, the problem I'm going to consider uh, is defined uh, as follows. Uh, uh, the input of the problem is uh, a binary symmetric uh, matrix A of some size n. Uh, and uh, uh, the output is just this uh, secret bit string Z. Uh, uh, so, uh, <coughs> so we ask that uh, if we restrict this quadratic form uh, to the null space of A, then uh, it coincides with uh, uh, this linear function, just in a product between x and uh, the secret uh, string z. Yes, uh, so this is the problem uh, that I'm going to consider. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, well, the first thing we can note is that uh, uh, for a given matrix A, uh, there are uh, many solutions z. Say, if z is one solution, uh, uh, we, uh, we can pick any vector of y uh, from the orthogonal, uh, 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 binary orthogonal complement to the null space of A, then z plus y is uh, another solution. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this is uh, what I call search problem. For a given input, we have uh, multiple solutions, uh, z. <coughs> and, uh, 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 another property is that uh, this problem uh, uh, can be solved classically in polynomial time using just basic linear algebra. Mm -hmm. Say uh, we can first compute uh, a set of basis vectors for this uh, null space of A, uh, and then we just need to solve uh, a linear system uh, of equations uh, modulo 2. <coughs> uh, and uh, mm, 
Uh, so it turns out that this problem is closely related to, uh, uh, to this Bernstein-Vazirani problem. Uh, and uh, uh, in the Bernstein-Vazirani settings, we also have some uh, 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 hidden linear function parameterized by uh, a bit string z. Uh, but uh, uh, this, uh, this linear function is given to us as an oracle. Uh, so, and the oracle implements this uh, uh, unitary operator. So uh, here the goal is to find this uh, uh, secret uh, string z uh, using uh, as few queries to the oracle uh, as possible. And uh, in the quantum case, uh, uh, we can find z using a single query. We just need to implement this simple uh, quantum circuit. Uh, but uh, in the classical case, uh, uh, we need to evaluate this uh, uh, linear function at least n times to learn z. <clears throat> uh, so uh, uh, the only difference between uh, our problem and uh, bernstein vazirani is that uh, in our case, uh, there is no oracle. So this, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the linear function is specified by, uh, by this uh, quadratic form. Uh, uh, or, and the quadratic form is given by a list of coefficients. <clears throat> uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to consider a certain restricted version of this hidden linear function problem defined on a two-dimensional grid. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we assume that uh, uh, these variables uh, x live at sides of a two-dimensional grid with uh, n sides. And, uh, <clears throat> Uh, 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 matrix A uh, uh, basically is adjacency matrix for some subgraph of the grid. Of, of, of the grid. <clears throat> so we only allow non-zero matrix elements uh, if I and J are, are nearest neighbor sites. Uh, and uh, then uh, non-zero matrix, uh, uh, non-zero uh, off-diagonal matrix elements correspond to some uh, subset of edges of the grid. And uh, non-zero diagonal elements correspond to some subset of uh, vertices of the grid. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so in the rest of the talk, uh, I'm going to consider this uh, two-dimensional uh, version of the problem. Uh, so uh, next, let me show uh, a quantum algorithm that solves this problem. Uh, and uh, uh, the algorithm is actually uh, uh, quite simple. Uh, so uh, we are going to have uh, two registers. One register consists of n qubits, and it's initialized in zero state. And the second register is uh, basically classical, and uh, it uh, stores uh, the input matrix A. And then uh, we implement this quantum circuit. Uh, so we have layer of Hadamars, uh, and then we have a layer of uh, 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 CZ gates, but each CZ gate controlled by, uh, by this classical register. So uh, if uh, we have a pair of qubits ij, uh, this non-zero matrix element of A, we are going to apply a CZ gate. And then we do similar uh, uh, layer of uh, control S gates. So for every qubit, this uh, diagonal matrix element of A equals to one, we apply uh, uh, the S gate. Uh, uh, and finally, we, uh, we measure each qubit in 0, 1 basis. So we get some output n bit string z. Uh, and uh, what we can show is that this z is always uh, a solution of uh, the hidden linear function problem. Uh, and uh, moreover, the output distribution of this circuit is uh, uh, the uniform distribution on the set of uh, all solutions. And uh, so you can see that uh, uh, the gate set used by this circuit consists of uh, only of Clifford gates, uh, but uh, most strictly these are, are classically controlled Clifford gates. <coughs> mm, uh, this is not too important. And uh, moreover, all gates are geometrically local on a, a two-dimensional grid. So we only use nearest neighbor gates. Now, uh, 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 let me give you some intuition why uh, this algorithm works. Uh, well, it's not hard to compute uh, the output distribution, and it turns out to be this uh, uh, given by this equation. 
So it's a Fourier transform of uh, a phase function controlled by uh, this quadratic form. Uh, and uh, this is very si similar to uh, output distribution of uh, IQP circuits uh, uh, that we saw in uh, Michael, uh, Michael's uh, talk on the first day. Uh, and uh, using the fact that Q of X is a quadratic form, uh, one can show that uh, uh, basically we can restrict this sum, this sum to null space of A. Uh, and uh, if X belongs to the null space of A, uh, we know that uh, uh, this quadratic form becomes some linear function L of X. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and this expression looks very similar to uh, output distribution of the berstein vazirani algorithm. Uh, so uh, basically, if Z is not solution of the problem, uh, some terms in this sum are plus one, some terms are minus one, and you have uh, cancellations, so the sum evaluates to zero. Uh, but if Z is solution, then uh, you have constructive interference, and the probability uh, is not zero. Uh, now, uh, let's move to uh, classical circuits uh, and uh, just uh, uh, some terminology. Uh, so, uh, uh, a classical gate uh, basically computes uh, a Boolean function. So, we have some number of input bits k, which is called uh, fine in of the gate. Uh, and uh, uh, we have some number of output uh, wires called uh, fine out of the gate. Uh, and the function computed by the gate is uh, copied uh, to every output wire. And I'm going to consider circuits uh, with bounded uh, fan-in. So uh, the number of input wires is uh, uh, bounded by some constant k. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, a depth d classical circuit basically consists of d time steps uh, and uh, uh, like in this example, we have just uh, two time steps, uh, and each time step is a product of disjoint uh, gates. Uh, and uh, so this is our main technical results. Uh, uh, so uh, this gives uh, a lower bound uh, on the depth of a classical circuit that solves uh, two-dimensional instances of the hidden linear function problem. And this bound grows logarithmically uh, with number of uh, uh, qubits n. Uh, and this constant depends only on uh, fan in, which, which is some constant. Uh, now, uh, uh, here I'm considering uh, probabilistic circuits. And uh, what it means is that uh, uh, the circuit takes as input uh, this binary symmetric matrix A and uh, some uh, uh, random bit strings R which can be drawn from uh, some arbitrary distribution. Uh, and then we apply some, uh, 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 some sequence of uh, uh, gates. And uh, what we can show is that if the output of this circuit is a solution uh, of the uh, HLF problem, this high probability, then the depth of the circuit must be uh, logarithmic in N. Sorry, this capital N should be actually uh, little n. <coughs> Uh, and uh, 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 to prove this result, uh, we exploit the fact that uh, uh, input-output correlations of this HLF problem uh, exhibit uh, 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 quantum non-locality, which is very similar to uh, uh, quantum non-locality in uh, Bell experiments or uh, JHZ experiment. Uh, and uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, we will show that uh, classical circuit, uh, well, input-output correlations of classical circuits cannot uh, uh, somehow achieve this form of uh, non-locality. Uh, and uh, the proof proceeds in several steps. So I will start from uh, completely local classical circuits, which are basically uh, local uh, hidden variable models. Uh, then uh, we shall consider uh, uh, classical circuits with uh, geometrically local gates, and then finally, uh, constant depth classical circuits. And uh, just let me give you a few definitions. So suppose we have classical circuit with, with some uh, inputs x and uh, some outputs z. Then uh, uh, we can look at some output bit and uh, find uh, all input bits uh, 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 that are causally connected to this output. Uh, 
And uh, so this defined, this subset of input bits is what I called uh, the light cone uh, of this output bit. <coughs> uh, and uh, in a similar fashion, we can uh, look at some input variable x1 uh, and uh, consider a set of all output bits causally connected to x1. So this will be the light cone of uh, x1. <coughs> uh, so, uh, so let's start from completely local uh, classical circuits. And uh, I'm going to use this uh, uh, GHZ type relation. So suppose we have a classical circuit, this uh, inputs x1, x2, x3, and outputs z1, z2, z3. Uh, and suppose uh, that uh, input-output correlations of the circuit are based with JHZ relation. Uh, and here I assume that output variables are plus minus one instead of zero one, but uh, it's not uh, uh, too important. Then uh, what can we say about uh, locality of such circuit? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, well known that it, it's impossible to satisfy with JHC relations using uh, these local hidden variables. Uh, by, uh, and what it means is that each output bit is a function of the corresponding uh, input bits and uh, some shared random variable h. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, more generally, uh, one can prove this uh, result that uh, uh, if a classical circuit uh, obeys this JT relation with high probability, uh, then uh, <coughs> the light cone of some input bit uh, must contain uh, a distinct output bit. So in that sense, the circuit uh, cannot be uh, completely local. Uh, uh, on the other hand, if uh, somehow uh, we allow uh, uh, shared entanglement, uh, we can just take a uh, three qubit JG state uh, distributed between these three parties. And then uh, each party measures its qubit of JG state in uh, either X or Y basis, uh, depending on the value of the input variable. And uh, one can check that uh, the measurement outcomes always uh, satisfy this uh, JHZ relation. So in that sense, uh, uh, quantum non-locality bits are completely local uh, classical circuits. <coughs> uh, and uh, 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 in the following, I will consider uh, more complicated uh, relations like this one. Uh, and uh, I will write such relations in a compact form. So we just have some relation that depends on inputs x and uh, output z. Uh, and uh, <coughs> we wanted to be satisfied if uh, uh, input bits uh, sum up to zero modulo two. So let's move to uh, geometrically local classical circuits. Uh, and uh, instead of uh, uh, JHZ state, I'm going to consider this uh, uh, graph states uh, uh, defined uh, on a cycle or uh, a ring of uh, n qubits. So we start from O0 state, apply a layer of Hadamars, and then we apply a, a CZ gate for each nearest neighbor uh, pair of qubits. <coughs> uh, 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 and now uh, uh, I define certain uh, pattern of measurements on this graph state. So I'm going to pick some uh, triple of qubits, u, v, w, uh, that are measured in either x or y basis. Uh, and all remaining qubits are, are measured in x basis. <coughs> um, so, uh, so this defines uh, this input-output correlations. So I have uh, three input bits that determine measurement basis at u, v, and w. And I have n outcomes, z, uh, but determine uh, 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 measurement outcomes on all n qubits. Uh, and uh, we are going to use uh, 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 a nice result from this paper by uh, Barrett et al. Uh, so they showed that these input-output correlations uh, obey uh, uh, a certain relation, which is a generalization of uh, JHZ relation. And I'm going to call this uh, a cycle relation. Uh, and, and this relation, uh, I'm not going to write it down explicitly, uh, but uh, the rough intuition is that uh, if you consider a uh, reduced state of qubits u, v, w, uh, 
uh, after all other qubits have been measured, uh, this is actually uh, the JG state. <coughs> uh, and uh, th there is some Pauli correction uh, that depends on, uh, on this measurement outcomes Z. <coughs> Uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> so what we can show is the following result. So suppose <coughs> uh, we have uh, uh, a classical circuit uh, that uh, satisfies this uh, cycle relation with uh, a high probability. Uh, uh, then uh, <coughs> we can find some input variable xi uh, <coughs> uh, such that its light cone contains uh, a distant output uh, uh, variable. Uh, uh, say this could be uh, xy could uh, define measurement basis for this qubit, then its light cone would contain some remote uh, uh, output variable. <coughs> uh, now, uh, how is this related to our uh, hidden linear function problem? Uh, so uh, let me remind you this uh, quantum circuit which solves uh, uh, HLF problem. Uh, <coughs> And uh, you can think of uh, the first half of the circuit as uh, preparation of a graph state uh, uh, defined on a certain graph dependent on A. And this is basically the graph uh, with adjacency matrix A. Uh, and you can think of uh, the second half of the circuit as uh, a bunch of single qubit measurements. And uh, we measure each qubit either in X basis or Y basis, depending on uh, the diagonal matrix element uh, of A. So this is actually very similar settings to uh, what I showed you before uh, for this one dimensional uh, graph state. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, because uh, we are free to choose this uh, adjacent symmetric A as we like, uh, we can choose it as uh, adjacent symmetric of uh, one-dimensional cycle embedded in, in this grid. Uh, and, uh, 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 and we can choose diagonal matrix elements uh, such that we have uh, this triple of qubits, U, V, W, uh, located on this cycle. And uh, these qubits are measured in uh, 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 either X, uh, well, in Y or X basis. So if you have some classical circuit that solves all two-dimensional instances of the HLF problem, it must also solve uh, all instances of this one-dimensional uh, uh, cycle problem. <coughs> uh, okay, and finally, uh, let's consider uh, general constant depth classical circuits. And uh, <coughs> uh, such circuits have the property that uh, uh, the light cone of uh, each output variable contains a constant number of input variables, because the circuit has constant depth, and uh, each gate has constant number of input wires. And uh, we use this property to, fall, uh, to prove uh, the following result. So uh, uh, suppose this classical circuit has uh, depth uh, sufficiently small, uh, uh, then uh, uh, we can find uh, some triple of vertices on this grid uh, UVW, uh, and we can find uh, a cy cycle gamma that passes, that contains U, V, and W, uh, uh, such that uh, uh, light cones of input variables associated with U, V, uh, and W uh, uh, do not contain any uh, 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 output variables uh, uh, that belong to gamma and are located far from U, and V, and W. Uh, and uh, uh, basically this property uh, uh, implies that uh, such classical circuit cannot solve, uh, cannot satisfy uh, uh, this cycle relation uh, on this uh, red cycle. Uh, and uh, uh, this implies that it cannot solve all instances of uh, two-dimensional uh, HLF problem uh, with high probability. So this basically uh, uh, proves the desired lower bound uh, on the depth of a uh, classical circuit. <coughs> now, uh, I want to conclude with uh, some uh, open problems. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, as I mentioned, we know that uh, uh, this HLF problem has polynomial time uh, classical algorithm. And uh, uh, basically, uh, one way to get such algorithm is just to 
classically simulate a quantum circuit uh, that solves the problem. So the quantum circuit uses only uh, Clifford gates, and we can uh, simulate it uh, using, say, aronson gottesman algorithm. And uh, using the fact that uh, all gates are nearest neighbors on a grid, uh, you can do this simulation in time uh, n squared. Uh, on the other hand, the quantum uh, circuit has a, a constant depth, so it runs in time uh, linear in n. Uh, and uh, we conjecture that actually uh, n squared is uh, the best, best uh, well, it's the best uh, classical algorithm that we know. So it's possible that uh, we actually have a square root quantum speed up uh, for this problem. Uh, then uh, you can ask whether this uh, uh, quantum advantage that we observed is robust uh, to noise. And uh, uh, for HLF problem defined on a grid, the answer is probably no. Uh, but uh, uh, it would be interesting to consider generalization of this problem defined on uh, uh, other sparse graphs. <clears throat> uh, uh, and uh, uh, you can also define, uh, well, uh, uh, the question is whether we can define generalization of this problem to, uh, to, uh, 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 by replacing a quadratic form with some more general function, say, a cubic polynomial. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so uh, there are interesting uh, uh, open problems uh, related to this complexity of sampling. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, if uh, instead of considering uh, uh, all possible uh, inputs, we can try to restrict the circuit to a single input and ask whether we can uh, sample the output distribution using uh, constant depth uh, classical circuit. Uh, and uh, let me conclude here. Thank you for attention. Questions? Is this working? Good. So uh, thanks for the talk. That's like a very beautiful result. Uh, um, I wonder if um, you know the original work of Barrett has sort of this connection to uh, bounding the communication uh, in these non-local correlations. Is there a way to turn this into you know one of these classes of of Bell inequalities with communication? Right. So we write down you know a normal Bell inequality says local hidden variables won't work. Is there a way to immediately take this and sort of write down? Uh, an experiment that, that people can run that sort of say that in order to simulate that experiment, there'd have to be this much communication. <clears throat> uh, yes, yeah, so I think this was the motivation for this work by uh, Barrett et al. And we, we tried to, as you said, we tried to generalize local hidden variable models to, uh, to the case with some bounded communication. Uh, and uh, so this cycle relation uh, is uh, basically uh, generalization of the Bell inequality to, to this, uh, to this uh, setting. So I guess you probably, I think in that paper, they had to restrict their classical communication to the nearest neighbors. And your result sort of implies that a model where you can broadcast actually can still result in that. Is, is that correct? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, I think you're, you're right. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? I think I have the mic. This is working? Yeah. Uh, so you, you show that uh, classically this problem is in polynomial time and there's an n squared time algorithm. Do, do you know what is the smallest classical complexity class into which you can put this 2D HLF problem? Like is it in log space or something? Uh, or even? Well, it's uh, Basically, it amounts to solving uh, a system of linear equations modular to. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I, I don't know the answer to your question, but my conjecture would be it's probably in uh, NC class, because we know that linear systems can be solved uh, in NC. We have time for one more question. Okay, if there are no other questions, let's thank Sergey again. Thank you.